As we just talked about a couple of hours ago, Moderna's booster shot moving a step closer to approval from the FDA. So our nine health expert, Dr. Paul Coley, is back with us today to talk more about this. So let's just get your reaction to that FDA committee vote. Were you at all surprised? You know, Tom, yes and no. So I wasn't surprised by who they chose to give the booster shot to, but I was surprised that it was unanimous because as we just heard a few minutes ago, Moderna is holding up so well against the Delta variant. I had thought that perhaps they would be more selective about who might be eligible for the booster. As though it's unnecessary at this point for many. Perhaps not unnecessary, but maybe overkill, that there may be a fewer proportion of people who would need a booster in order to maintain that protection because that protection from the initial two-shot series was so good. Now keep in mind, that was a high dose of the Moderna than the Pfizer. So we got 100 micrograms as opposed to 30. And that could be part of why the protection's holding up better. Is that the biggest difference here with this booster compared to uh, Pfizer's? Exactly. Yeah. So the Pfizer booster is exactly like the first two shots. You're just getting a third shot of the same shot as before. With Moderna, it's a half dose. So we're thinking that that's enough, again, because the first shot was 100 and 100, that 50 might be enough to augment that immune response. Have they already started talking about, like, is this something we're going to have to get every year? This is a million dollar question. And so the preliminary data suggests that, yes, and likely our antibodies are going to over time. But the question really becomes if you start making repeated deposits into your immune system savings bank, which is what we're doing here with every booster, at some point will you still need to make deposits? We've been talking a lot for a long time about mixing and matching. So we have benefits of mixing and matching and are there any risks of mixing and matching? Where do we stand with that right now? So, so far we have a new study that shows us that mixing and matching may actually be better because you can get the benefits of both types of vaccines. So we're seeing an incredibly augmented response. Now, what we don't know, and the caveats to the study, first, it's preprint, so it hasn't been peer-reviewed peer yet. But second, which combination is the best? Should you first get a DNA like Johnson & Johnson and then a messenger RNA, vice versa? Should you get two messenger RNAs? That's still waiting to be worked out. Because wow. yeah, I feel like there's so many of us. I mean, millions of us did get the J&J, &J, so we've kind of been sitting around here like, what about us? <laughs> what do we do? So the FDA is going to meet tomorrow to talk about J&J, &J, whether their participants should get a J&J &J booster or whether it might be better for them to get a messenger RNA booster. Mm. I will say if I had gotten J&J, &J, I'm going to go for a Moderna booster based on all the data that I've seen so far, because even the two shot J&J &J is not holding up like the messenger RNAs. Is that all the FDA is doing tomorrow or is there more that they're still taking a look at or deciding on? Those two main questions, J&J, &J, whether they should get the same booster or different, and then mixing and matching, which is a big one because we don't want to commit people to the same shot that they got unless we absolutely have to. Well, I know the three of us would never be peer reviewed. <laughs> we, we can't find anybody. <laughs> we're, we're still looking for our peers. Uh, Dr. Coley, thanks as always. We appreciate your insights into the Moderna Booster News today. Appreciate it.